All right, so in the last tutorial, we set up a basic Flask project and then create a static website, which you can see here. And this time we're gonna go ahead and add some dynamic content by adding a basic login page. So we're gonna be building on the same code from the last video. So be sure to either watch that video or download the source code at realpythonfortheweb.com in this video's description. First, we need to update the routes file to include a new route for the login page. So we go ahead and pull up the code for that. I'm gonna go ahead and change this here. Okay, so we start the same at app.route. This is gonna be log. And we need to do an HTTP post request. We need to find that method. I'm gonna go ahead and put the get request on there too in case we need to use that. So here I'm gonna go ahead and set up an if statement so that when the login is correct, one thing happens, and when the login is incorrect, another thing happens. So let's start with the post request. So if the username does not equal admin, and if the password also doesn't equal admin, then there's gonna be an error. So we'll change the variable to invalid credentials. else if it is correct I'm going to redirect the user to the hello page And this right here is going to map anything that goes to forward slash log to log.html. And let me just go ahead and clean up this file because I actually put this below here. Let me separate these out. And let me go ahead and add the routing in for the log page. Or, I'm sorry, not the log page, the hello page. All right, so next in the template.html file, we're gonna go ahead and add the the link here for the login page and that's forward slash log okay so now I'm gonna go ahead and set up the actual log that HTML page let me create a new file here let me just go ahead and actually copy and paste this over for time's sake and I'll go ahead and save this that's log.html And I didn't mention this in the first video, but in these HTML files, anything surrounded by curly braces and a percent sign is a template tag. And the syntax looks much like Python, while anything surrounded by the double curly braces is a variable. So for example, error is a variable that we defined in the routes.py file, which you can see here. And if you use Django before, you're probably already familiar with this syntax and that concept. 
Okay, so finally, let's go ahead and add the page that we will be re redirected to if the login is correct. So that hello.html file. And I'm going to copy and paste this over as well. Go and save. Oops. Go ahead and save that. Templates file. So hello.html. Okay, so let's go ahead and fire up the server. And it's actually already running. Let me kill it and bring it back up. Just make sure everything gets updated. Go ahead and refresh the page. And you can see the login link here. All right, the requested URL was not found on the server. So let's check the routes.py file. Something must be wrong with the mapping. Okay, let me look here. Everything looks correct. Um, let me make sure I saved all these files. As I forget to do that. Um, let me just go ahead and kill the server. Try that again. Hit a refresh. Ah, there we go. Oh, we got the login page. And let me just enter some dummy data here. You can see there is the error that's populated by the variable right here, error. And that's also on the HTML log page. And let's go ahead and enter admin and then admin. And this should redirect us to the hello.html file. There we go. Welcome. You are now logged in. So you pull back up um, the command line here, you can actually see the HTTP verbs. You can see the git in the post. And you can see that this last one, we, we issued a git request for hello. And on this one, we issued a post request when we sent our login credentials. So you can always follow what's going on here. So you can kind of like see the errors and, and stuff like that when you need to uh, do any sort of debugging. All right, and so that's it for now. And although this was another base example, we are in the next video, I'll add some additional dynamic functionality before we deploy the application to the web. All right, well, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.